My name is Elijah Miles. I'm 18 years old, and I'm a freshman at Morgan State University. I first would like to thank TEDx Baltimore for giving me this opportunity to speak this evening. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm the youngest of five, three brothers, one sister, baby of the bunch, mommy's favorite. <laughs> and I was born and raised here in Baltimore City. The city of no hope is what I've always been told. Growing up, the people on my block would always say, Elijah, that boy, he got potential. He gonna make it far away from Baltimore. My teachers would say that the reason we should get good grades and stay in school is so we can go to, go to college, get a good job, and be able to lead a neighborhood. My friends, when they tell me about their goals, they would always say that my goal is to you know, work hard in school, go to a four-year college, get a good job, and be able to move my family out this neighborhood. These goals on the surface seem harmless and wonderful. We think to ourselves, isn't that great? An ambitious kid who's gonna make something of himself no matter what. We love these rags the richest dreams. They seem like something straight off a movie. Kids walking around thinking that success in their neighborhood is not compatible, thinking that success is literally whether or not they can leave the hood or not. But I tell you today that it's this idea, this perception of success, that keeps Baltimore the same Baltimore generation after generation after generation. <laughs> this is because our leaders of tomorrow don't want to stay here and make it better. Instead, they're in constant pursuit of this wonderful place that's not here. And when they are all gone, who are our kids left to look up to? No one. The absence of role models to point to is what leaves the city hopeless. Instead of raising kids in pursuit of a better future for themselves and their families, let's raise heroes, saviors even. But you can't raise a hero and fear their own environment. Heroes are courageous. You tell them it's like this right now, little man. Sure it's drugs, sure it's violence, sure it's gangs. But if you stay in school and you work hard, maybe you can come back and do something about this. We can't raise our heroes to chase after these, this money, cars, and dream homes. Because we all know that materials don't bring true satisfaction, and they surely don't bring change. We can't raise our heroes by telling them to work hard so you don't end up like the man on the corner. We raise them by constantly telling them to work hard, stay in school, your community needs you. And when you come back, be able to offer opportunity that might just take that brother off the corner. We need to begin to raise the supermen and wonder women that these neighborhoods need. We say we want to raise the leaders of tomorrow, but we teach them to hate where they come from and work hard to get to some artificial utopia. It seems to me like we're trying to bake a cake with the wrong ingredients. Martin Luther King was stabbed by a black woman at a book signing. Malcolm X was killed by black men while making a speech. In order to raise a leader for our community, he must love us even when we hate him and even when we hate ourselves. We need people that's gonna love the neighborhood. We need them not only to lead us, but embrace us, become a functional part of us. It's a bunch of people that say they want to help, but they want to be comfortable helping. They want to donate money to fix the problem. They want to visit the problem. They want to do their nine to five and leave the problem and escape to the safety of their own homes. They're afraid to get their hands dirty. They fear they might get hurt. They want to change us and change our communities, but refuse to make a change in their self. How arrogant is that? That we got people that come in our neighborhoods and come in our schools wanting to teach because we need help, and we do. But at the same time, they don't even try to understand us, not even a little. They don't want to listen to the same music as us. They don't want to move into the same neighborhoods as us. And when they have kids, they don't want to send their kids to the same public schools as us. It just boggles my mind. Like,
just boggles my mind. And you wonder why we got kids growing up out of these neighborhoods, feeling so insecure, hating themselves and hating their communities, and wanting to leave so bad because they've been told by people, most of them that don't even live in our neighborhood, that the first chance you get to leave, take it. This type of help just doesn't work. This one foot in and one foot out attitude, it just doesn't work. A wise man told me that the problem with giving a homeless man a dollar is that he'll still be homeless tomorrow. This type of one foot in and one foot out approach to things just doesn't work. I'm sorry I gotta be so blunt, but this is something dear to my heart. This is something that no one addresses, this, this problem. These kids, they deserve more than half of you. We gotta be all in with this. We gotta be willing to deny our self-comfort, willing to face controversy, willing to even lay down our life, because if not, the problems of the day will continue to be the problems of tomorrow. And our kids will grow up in a world as brutal and as harsh as the one I grew up in. This is my motivation. This is what drives me. This is what pushes me to go to college and get a 3-7 in the first semester. But, but I'm no genius. I graduated from high school with a 2-7. This is what pushes me to not poison myself with the drugs and the alcohol that destroy and, and plague my neighborhood. This is what pushes me to love the neighborhood that produced me, but also love the peers, some of whom that I have fought, that have jumped me and robbed me at gunpoint, because I know that Elijah Miles is no different from them. I wear golds in my mouth. I sag my pants. I listen to the same music. I done grew up in the neighborhoods with them. I know them. So I can't judge them because I am them. And I refuse to give up on them. You know, <laughs> you know, before I made, my, before I made this TED Talk, there was a bunch of people telling me like, dang, Elijah, you making a TED Talk? You going big time, man. But you got to understand, I'm not, a, I'm not about going big time. I'm not doing this for the sake of Elijah Miles and my future. I don't care if this takes me to the next level. It's not about me. It's bigger than me. I will live in Baltimore City, in the hood, for the rest of my life until I can transform my hood back into a neighborhood, working with them, fighting with them struggling with them because that is the only way we will make progress and that's the only way we will make change. Jesus did not hang out with the Pharisees to cure people with leprosy. Jesus hung with the downtrodden, ate with the downtrodden, fought for the downtrodden because that's who he wanted to help. So ask yourself this afternoon, what are you doing to make the world a better place? Are you giving all that you can give? And are you okay with that? It was Albert Einstein that said, the world is a dangerous place, not because of those of us who do evil, but because of those of us who witness it, are aware of it, and do nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Elijah Miles. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>